We know the toll in lives from the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. At least 130,000 people, maybe 150,000 in the very first days, perhaps that many more over time. A toll the builders of the bomb could only guess at, and they probably underestimated the figures. We know of the horrific long-term suffering of the civilian survivors of those cities, unlike anything experienced by any other survivors of warfare in history. And we know the cloud that civilization has lived under for 70 years because of the decision made in the 1940s to unleash the destructive capacity of the atomic nucleus. And we know that the Nazis actually never did have a working atomic bomb program. The scientists who stayed behind in Germany got the physics of the bomb wrong and concluded it could not be built and didn't try. But the Allies didn't learn that until after the war was over. Now, I don't mean by all this that we shouldn't judge the scientists of the Manhattan Project at all, only that we should temper our judgment by what they thought they knew. They thought they were building a weapon that could shorten the war and maybe even save lives. They thought they were in a race with a homicidal maniac bent on world domination. They were focused on the emergency of the immediate present. Germany's surrender in 1945 changed the calculus, but not the momentum of this effort. Unlike Germany, Japan was not widely feared as a potential nuclear threat, and its regime was not seen as fixed on world domination, maybe regional domination. But by then, the bombs were nearly complete. The impulse to use them was very strong. In fact, the planes were already ready on the island of Tinian, pointed at Japan. The final debate among scientists and military and political leaders before Hiroshima was over whether dropping the bombs on the unsuspecting Japanese was truly necessary or whether a demonstration over a desert or an unpopulated Pacific atoll could deliver a sufficiently compelling message to the Japanese regime. The record tells us that the last holdout against dropping the bombs was Lawrence himself, but that eventually he too acknowledged that the risk of a dud was too great and a demonstration that didn't demonstrate anything would be worse than no demonstration at all. Historians have debated ever since, in fact we still debate today, whether the bombing of Japan was truly necessary to secure surrender, but there can be no question really that most of the people directly involved in the decision accepted the assumption that it was. 